Hey guys, it's Anne. Welcome to the channel. And today we're going to take a look in on Blue, the 55 gallon DIY worm bin. Now, first things first, we're going to go take a look at this end and see what there is to harvest. And then we're going to take a look at this end to see how the worms have been doing with the food that we gave them the last time. All right, let me put you down and we'll start taking a look. Okay, so what we've got here is just, uh, we're kind of harvesting as we go. It dries and then we kind of sift a little bit to see what we can get out of it. Kind of looking at it to see what's going on. Grab the big stuff, put it at the leading end here. It's uh, retained quite a bit of moisture on it, so it doesn't look like we're going to get a lot in the way of sifting. But we'll get a little bit. Pretty much looking to see what there is to pick out to add to the other end. But yeah, this is this is too too wet to really sift well. I had uh, some questions uh, that I saw on the Facebook group and they said, you know, when I'm sifting, how come I get these little balls? Now I've mentioned it here on the channel before that, you know, if you sift when it's too wet, then it kind of does ball up. And um, that's just an indication that you need to wait a little bit longer for it to dry a little bit more you know, you're probably going to have a better luck getting the worms to leave if you wait as well. But I'm just, you know, out for some slow progress, and that's fine. I'll just take a little bit out. I've got some uh, new bedding to make, so I need some fresh castings to use for the, the new bedding which of course I will bring you along with and uh, make a video of it. I haven't done a video on my bedding for a while, so I think it's about time. But you also see me kind of like breaking up these little hard bits, seeing if they're stuff that's undigested or if they are in fact just the little balls um, of compressed castings. Trying to skim off the very top where it's been dry. I did come in here midweek and uh, fluff the bin up a little bit to try and get the moisture a little bit more even. So that's why the top is not super dry because I did do some in between fluffing. But I'll take just a little handful here. Anything beyond the mid midway is uh, not going to be done enough. The closer we get to the other end, the more likely that it's not going to be finished enough to use for castings. We had a, a little bit of t good weather here for a while, so the furnace wasn't on nonstop. So that might be why things are not exactly drying out right. Now I'm going to show you a little trick. It's not part of this video. I'll include it in the next video as well, but I'm going to show you what I do. If you've been a member of my uh, worm family for a while, you'll know that I also grow grapes and, and all sorts of things. And these are actually bags that people who grow figs and stuff put the fruit in to keep the bugs off of it at the end of the season. And these are also really good for making worm tea. I don't know what they're really meant for, maybe party favors or something, like put pretty party favors. Uh, what could be a better party favor than uh, worm castings? Uh, not to mention that they're easier than what I used to do, which would be to tie them up in an old t-shirt, and then I had to figure out how to get the t-shirt untied to get the, the leftovers. So these two things will be helping us make the worm tea in a little bit. But that's not what this video is about. We're going to put them off to the side. So let's have a look and see what they're doing in here. 
still have tons and tons of worms at this end. I might try and do some baiting or something to get them out of here because I could use some worms for an upcoming experiment. I know they tend to just move on their own, but I also tend to be impatient. So, yep, I'm going to keep moving this end down. Hopefully the worms will start getting the, the point. So this is the wedge method. This is me taking stuff that is much more done and moving it down to the end to make room for new stuff. So we're getting to the, the center line here and that's pretty much my delineation at this moment as to where new versus old is. So we're going to do some good stacking here and make some room so that we can start a new area here. Last year's pumpkin stem, can you believe it? And that's 2020 pumpkin stem, not 2021 pumpkin stem. All right, let me flip you around and then we'll look at the leading edge. All right, so we'll take the lid off here for the blanket, however we want to call it. Flicked a whole bunch of worms on there when I was harvesting, so I'm going to get them off of there. Alright, so now we're going to start looking at the, I would say maybe a month ago. This is when I fed that big pile of leaves. You can still see the sticks and stems, as AV would say. So we're going to carefully move this over into the uh, other side of the, I don't know, seam. Let's call it a seam good concentration of worms. I'm not running into any bedding. Plant tag from something. Alright. So yeah, you still see a lot of those leaf evidence. And that is another thing that's good about coming in here and fluffing. I know a lot of people are like, just leave them alone and come back a couple months. Well, that wouldn't make very good video. And also, um, with plastic bins that do not have any holes in them, you do run the risk of having some anaerobic spots. Just where the moisture settled or what have you. And uh, so it's really a better idea, in my opinion, to keep an eye on it. So I'm just going to keep chipping away here until we get to where the food was. Moving all the big things down. But this is going to leave us with a, a good amount of real estate to um, have a new feeding. And that's good because CC came back from vacation and cleaned out her refrigerator. So we are going to have a good amount of food for the worms here pretty soon. All right, let me move you down again. All right. So we're still taking a look in on things here. This is a half of a avocado pit. That's going to be six months to a year. I mean, that's a big one as well. So still chipping away. I think it's been about two weeks since we've been in here. So I'm not exactly sure what shape the food's going to be in when we get to it. And again, I'm just taking my sticks and everything and moving them to the end. I'm trying to 
be aware of where the worm ball may be so that we don't disturb it and we can see one big huge awesome worm ball all at the same time. Okay. Move you down a little bit more. Okay, so we've got to be getting close to the food here somewhere. You can see where the paper bedding that was added last time is. And the worms that are in this bin are my Uncle Jim's mix. They're the red wigglers, the blue worms, and the European night crawlers. This time of year the blue worms slow down a bit and then the European night crawlers and red wigglers start to shine. I think the blue worms are still in there. I just don't think they're they're breeding as fast and they're not being as zippy as they are during the warm weather. Oop, okay. Well, here's some pumpkin. I don't really see a worm ball around it. Maybe we missed the worm ball. Not really a proper worm ball. Come on, worms. Mm, kind of. Kind of getting worm ball ish. Maybe there's not enough moisture down here. This paper bedding's feeling a little dry. So, yeah, the, the pumpkin seeds are sprouting. Even the pumpkin wants to have spring. So yeah, we're kind of getting a diffused worm ball, not not anything super awesome, but look at all the babies on this avocado pit. Uh, that's all the grit that I added the last time. It did give them a really big feeding because they ate everything before we got to it the time before. So I really gave them a lot of food. There's probably about 10 or 12 pounds of, maybe even more than that, of worms in here right now. You can see some of the blue worms are still hanging out, but they're not not zipping along for sure. Um, I did ask on my uh, channel um, community page if people would be interested in kind of some worm trivia. And one of the things that I found out when I was reading my, my book was that there is a, a major difference between the blue worms, the African night crawlers, those two and then the red wigglers, European night crawlers and, and the rest of those. They are very different um, in their species. And one of the things that I thought was really interesting was that their method of locomotion um, is their little tiny hairs that they have called setae on each one of their, um, let me see if I can find a big enough worm to be able to see the individual segments. So each individual segment has a number of these little hairs which is how they move. And in the case of red wigglers and European night crawlers they have little pairs of them spaced out across the circumference of the uh, individual ring. Now the blue worms have a continuous ring going all the way around of these setae. Uh, which is, like I said, the way they move around. And I'm thinking maybe that's why they are so fast, is because they have twice as many feet, or maybe even three or four times as many feet, as a European Nightcrawler or a um, Red Wiggler. All right, snail. Sorry. For those of you who are not... Yeah, I don't normally show me squishing the snail, but he had to go. So then the far end here is just sticks and stems that aren't done yet. And for some reason, there's always a little worm ball underneath all of those sticks and stems. So we're going to put those back down at the back. 
and we'll reassemble the feeding zone here. And I think I'm going to add some moisture to the feeding end here because very simply, you know, we didn't get a worm ball and it's probably because there wasn't high enough moisture. So let's get a spot here. Okay, had a little bit of a, a camera snafu here. Uh, but what we're going to do here is we're going to take the sticks uh, from my clippings from my avocado trees and my uh, hot peppers and figs and put them there and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to give them their old pumpkin back mixed in with some of uh, CeCe's leftovers. So this has added a little bit more moisture. Got some uh, radishes. Got some radishes. Got the pumpkin. Uh, I think the rest of the stuff's pretty much un. Uh, describable at this point, but I added some moisture to the food to, to make it a little bit more palatable for the worms. And then I've taken my leavings from my siftings, and I've also put some water in them to get them fluffed up again. So anything that was over the top of the screen is uh, been re-moisturized so that it will work better in the bin. And in addition to that, I am going to give this bin some more leaves uh, for bedding since I have not made any new bedding in a while. And uh, I'm going to make a video, video of it and bring you guys around with me. So let me get the leaves. So it is a lot of leaves but uh, I do have a lot of food here so I want to make sure to keep everything covered up so that the bugs don't fly by and and see hey this is this is a good place to live um, also having some leaves at the end there if there is any liquid that drains off of it then it will um, you know soak that up as well all right guys well blue here has his own playlist and if you want to go back and watch more videos about blue I will link that below if you want to see the last feeding I will link that above uh, if you like this video give it a muddy thumbs up if you're not a member of my worm family click that subscribe button and if you want to know what I'm doing when I'm doing it ring that bell icon all right guys thanks for hanging out with me and my worms and everybody have a good day